So to finish off our discussion on gluconeogenesis and glycolysis, let's focus on lactate molecules because as we discussed previously, lactate is one of the major types of non-sugar precursor molecules that our cells use to actually generate glucose in the process we call gluconeogenesis. So why do cells produce lactate? What types of cells produce lactate? And what happens to the lactate once the cells actually produce it? So let's begin by focusing on question number one. Why do cells produce lactate? Well, remember that glycolysis, which is basically used to form ATP molecules and pyruvate molecules from glucose, is not a perfect process and what that means is it actually uses up important molecules known as NAD plus molecules nicotine amide adenine dinucleotides and these molecules are needed by glycolysis to actually continue the process of glycolysis but glycolysis doesn't regenerate these molecules once it takes place and that's precisely why under aerobic conditions, when we have plenty of oxygen inside the cell, that pyruvate enters the mitochondria and we form more ATP molecules and we also regenerate those NAD plus molecules from the breakdown of pyruvate under aerobic conditions. Now, sometimes in those cells that don't have mitochondria or in those cells that are experiencing hypoxia, so a lack of oxygen, they cannot actually break down the pyruvate in the citric acid cycle of the mitochondria. So instead of using that, they switch to anaerobic respiration. So in anaerobic respiration, which takes place entirely in the cytoplasm, we essentially undergo glycolysis to form the ATP molecules and the pyruvate molecules, but then to regenerate the much needed NAD plus coenzymes, the pyruvate is transformed into lactic acid. And under our conditions, under physiological conditions of the cells of our body, lactic acid associates into its conjugate base lactate and the H plus ions. And that's why our cells produce lactate. So our cells undergo lactic acid fermentation to basically regenerate the NAD plus molecules needed for glycolysis to actually continue. So any type of cell that uses anaerobic respiration will generate these lactate molecules. And two examples that we're going to focus on, the two dominant types of cells that actually use anaerobic respiration are red blood cells and skeleton muscle cells. Let's focus on skeleton muscle cells. So skeleton muscle cells are the cells that use ATP to basically contract the actin myosin filaments and that allows voluntary motion. So I can move my arm because of skeleton muscles or I can sprint across the room because of these skeleton muscle cells. Now, skeleton muscle cells have the option of using aerobic or anaerobic respiration. So if there is oxygen uh, present, it will use aerobic, but if not, it will use anaerobic. But red blood cells don't have organelles. They don't have any mitochondria. And what that means is they don't have the cell machinery needed for aerobic respiration. So Red blood cells only use anaerobic cellular respiration to produce ATP molecules. And so red blood cells produce many of these lactate molecules. So once again, lactate is the major precursor molecule that can be used to form glucose in gluconeogenesis. Skeleton muscle cells produce lactic acid, which then associates into lactate and the H plus ions during exercise when the rate of glycolysis is greater than the rate of oxidative phosphorylation that takes place in the mitochondria. Other types of cells like red blood cells only produce lactic acid because they don't have the machinery, the mitochondria needed to actually regenerate those NAD plus coenzymes that we must have if we want to actually use glycolysis to form those ATP molecules. Now, notice that if the cells continually use lactic acid fermentation, there's going to be a buildup in the H plus concentration in the cell and the surrounding tissue. And that will decrease the pH and increase the acidity. And that can be very dangerous. Why? Well, because 
all the different types of structures, the proteins and nucleic acids and DNA molecules are held together by what types of bonds? Well, electric bonds. And these electric bonds can essentially be disrupted as a result of the increase in the ion concentration of the H plus ions. And so our cells actually have mechanisms that turn off glycolysis when there is too much buildup of the H plus ions in our blood. And that's exactly why eventually as we're sprinting, we have to stop because of this idea because glycolysis is shut down as a result of this molecule acting as an allosteric inhibitor to specific enzymes of glycolysis. Now, we know what lactate is, we know why we produce lactate, and we know what types of cells produce lactate, but once the cells produce lactate, what is the ultimate fate of that lactate molecule? What happens to the lactate? So we see that metabolizing skeletal muscle cells or red blood cells cannot actually use the lactate molecule in any useful way. They can't actually do anything useful with the lactate, but that doesn't mean that other cells, specialized cells of our body, cannot actually use the lactate for something special or for something useful. In fact, two specialized types of cells that can and do use lactate produced by red blood cell and skeleton muscle cells are cardiac muscle cells and liver cells. So what is the ultimate fate of lactate? Well, once lactate moves across the membrane of these erythrocytes and skeletal muscle cells and enters the bloodstream of our cardiovascular system, the blood plasma, it generally ends up in one of two locations cardiac muscle cells and liver cells. And so let's focus on the following diagram as we go along this text. And let's imagine that we're essentially sprinting. So as we begin to sprint, initially what happens in our skeleton muscle cell? So in that skeleton muscle cell, we need to basically produce the ATP for the actin myosin fibers to actually contract. And so the glycogen storages are essentially depleted. We break down glycogen into glucose 6-phosphate and that is then used to produce pyruvate molecules and ATP molecules and then to reform the NAD pluses because initially as we begin sprinting we have plenty of oxygen. The pyruvate will go into the mitochondria where we produce many more ATP molecules and regenerate those NAD plus coenzymes that are then reused by glycolysis. In addition, we also produce carbon dioxide and water molecules. Now, at the same exact time, our glycogen storages are being depleted. What that means is the skeleton muscle cell will have to look elsewhere for the glucose supply. And so, because we have plenty of glucose in our bloodstream, that glucose is essentially uptaken by the skeleton muscle cells. So we can get the glucose from the glycogen or we can get it from that circulating blood, pla blood plasma. Now, really quickly, if we're sprinting very rapidly, then what that means is the O2 will be depleted very quickly and we're going to enter anaerobic conditions in which we're going to use lactic acid fermentation to basically produce lactate molecules from pyruvate in the process regenerating those NAD plus coenzymes. Now, what happens to the lactate? Well, once we produce the lactate, these cells have special type of membrane transporters that stimulate these lactate molecules to actually move into the bloodstream. Why? Well, because generally speaking, skeleton muscle cells don't actually do anything useful with the lactate molecules. And so they deposit it into the bloodstream with the hopes that other cells, specialized cells, will pick them up and, and essentially recycle them and use them for something useful. And that's exactly what happens as we'll see in just a moment. So at the same time we're running, we also have these red blood cells, which are also carrying out many different, different types of processes. And so in these cells, the red blood cells also uptake these glucose molecules from the bloodstream because they need to use the glucose to form the ATP. And so glycolysis takes place in the erythrocyte. And once we form the pyruvate, because it doesn't have any mitochondria, it can't use aerobic respiration. So it, dep it depends strictly on fermentation. And so we transform the pyruvate into lactate 
and just like in this case it diffuses into the bloodstream and so now we have a buildup of lactate in our bloodstream what happens next well let's focus on one the first place it goes to are the cardiac muscle cells because the cardiac muscle cells actually contain special membrane bound proteins that can transport these lactate into the cell now what happens to the lactate well inside cardiac muscle cells we have a special enzyme known as lactate dehydrogenase and what lactate dehydrogenase and what lactate de uh, dehydrogenase can do is it can basically transform the lactate molecules back into pyruvate molecules what for well when we're running when we're sprinting not only are the skeleton muscle cells working but the cardiac muscle cells are continually pumping that blood through the cardiovascular system and as we begin running quicker what that means is the heart has to pump quicker and more and with a more forceful contraction and so what that happens is it also needs to actually create ATP molecules and the lactate molecules basically create this additional source of energy that can be used to basically form that glucose uh, to form the pyruvate that, I, that is actually then fed into the mitochondria. So lactate goes into the cardiac muscle cell, which is transformed by lactate dehydrogenase into pyruvate, and then the pyruvate goes straight into the mitochondria. Why? Well, because cardiac muscle cells never undergo anaerobic respiration. There's always plenty of oxygen inside the cardiac muscle cells. And so for that reason, the pyruvate is fed directly into the mitochondria. So we see that these cardiac muscle cells really utilize these high energy molecules because not only do the glucose molecules inside the cardiac muscle cell actually transform into pyruvate and then go into the mitochondria and not only are the glycogen storages used to produce the glucose 6-phosphate which ultimately form the ATP molecules but in addition the lactate molecules produced by the other cells that undergo aerob uh, anaerobic respiration are also used to actually form these energy molecules. So we see that cardiac muscle cells can use lactate molecules to form the ATP energy molecules. And so by doing that, they essentially create this additional source of energy and they also conserve the glucose molecules inside the bloodstream by conserving the glucose molecules by using less glucose molecules or more lactate molecules. That basically means other cells can basically use the glucose to carry out different types of uh, different types of processes. Now, that's basically the first place where the lactate ends up. So cells such as cardiac muscle cells have special membrane proteins that can make the cell highly permeable to lactate. And once inside the cardiac myocytes, the lactate can be transformed back into pyruvate by lactate dehydrogenase and then fed into the citric acid cycle to generate ATP. Why? We, well, because in cardiac muscle cells, we only use aerobic respiration, never anaerobic respiration. There's always plenty of oxygen inside these cells. And this helps these cardiac muscle cells obtain an additional source of energy and also helps conserve the glucose in the blood so that other cells can actually use the glucose, for instance, uh, brain cells. Now, the second place where these uh, lactate molecules end up is the liver cells. And what happens to the liver cell or what happens to these uh, lactate molecules in liver cells is known collectively as the Cori cycle. And, we f and we'll focus on that in much more detail in a future lecture. So lactate essentially goes into these liver cells. Now, once lactate goes into the liver cell, the lactate is transformed into pyruvate, and that can go in many different directions. The pyruvate, if we're, for instance, exercising, the pyruvate can be used to actually form the glucose, and then the glucose goes back into the bloodstream to actually maintain that level, the proper glucose level in our blood. But if we're not exercising, then the lactate is transformed into pyruvate, and then that transform, and then that is transformed into glucose 6-phosphate, which then goes uh, 
and we store it as glycogen. Now, if we do need glucose molecules or if we do need ATP molecules, the pyruvate can actually go into the mitochondria, as in this case and this case, and form those ATP molecules that are needed by the cell, the liver cell, to actually carry out the main different types of processes. And this is basically what happens to the lactate molecule once the skeleton muscle cells and red blood cells actually produce them inside our body.